So Casey, thank you for coming on. Um, King's Pest and doing some other businesses, it seems. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and the business or businesses that you're currently running? Uh, yeah, uh, my name's Casey McDaniel. I am, uh, I'm almost 25 birthday coming up uh, next year. So I am, or next <laughs> next, year, <laughs> next month. Uh, so I am a younger guy. Um, I've been in the, the pest control industry. This is my fifth year. Uh, my business partner is also my cousin. He's got about 10, 11 years of experience now at this point. Um, and uh, we, we both started in door-to-door sales. He's the one that got me into it. And then after a few years rolling, uh, we decided to start up our own. Um, growing up, though, I always watched my my parents were very entrepreneurial, always uh, had some businesses going on. Uh, so I've kind of dabbled in in little things here and there. Um, I, I paid a kid to write some code, and I had a little SaaS company last year that, that kind of fizzled out, didn't quite go how I wanted. Um, mostly, I'm, I'm passionate about finance. I have a finance degree, so I do love the, the business and running the numbers and stuff like that. Um, but really, I love uh, I love stocks. I love investing. I love talking about numbers. Um, so, so that's actually my real passion, more so than probably pest control. But uh, sometimes you got to do what, what pays the bills rather than, uh, you know, what, what you'd love to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good to know that you have that finance degree and that, that business background. Um, knowing that you got that finance degree, you maybe could have gone and gotten a job at a, a financial firm and maybe done a Wall Street type career. What inspired you to forego that and, and start a pest control business? Um, <clears throat> good question. Um, so we, we started up in, in 2020 is when I got into it. Um, during COVID, a lot of places shut down. They weren't hiring. There wasn't a whole lot um, of, of job opportunities. Internships weren't, weren't happening. And so that's why I went ahead and, and gave in to my cousin and went out and, and did the, the pest control door-to-door sales for one summer. And I was pretty natural, pretty good at it. Um, definitely not the best, but definitely not the worst either. So uh, after one summer of that, I decided to, to give it one more year to see if it was really a good fit. And during that summer, we decided that, that we should start up our own. We'd be really good operators, not just salesmen. And so once you kind of commit, you know, you're either all in or all out. It's it's not a good idea to start a business, but have other aspirations at the same time. So uh, we've been running it for a few years now, and it's been going really well. We we plan to continue running it at least another decade or so. And then um, I always have the the dream of maybe having an encore career later in life, going to a financial firm or starting up my own, getting my licenses and stuff. But uh, for now, that's on the back burner, and, and pest control is is what's been working. Mm-hmm. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah, and that testing for the financial stuff I know can be a real slog to get all those. Um, tests out of the way. Is there a lot of testing or certifications that are required to start a pest control business? Yeah. So um, every state is a little bit different, but most of them are are pretty much pretty pretty similar. Uh, there's two licensing in licenses in most states: um, a lower license and a higher license. Um, so to get your lower license, you can just request the study material from the ag department and they'll send it out. You can study up. It's not too hard of a test. You just need a 70% to pass and it's pass fail. And you can get that uh, and then you're a licensed operator and start spraying for another company. Um, You can get a job. Um, The higher license typically does require between one and three years of experience in most states. And it is a harder test. You have to have the experience. You have to work for another company to to get that. And so it is quite a bit more difficult. and you have to have the higher license on on your business books to to get your business license and legally operate. So there are some workarounds for that. A lot of people will either hire someone who has the higher license and uh, they'll just rent that from them, put it on their books. Or they will just go out and find maybe an older retired operator who has that higher license and they'll just pay them a monthly fee and rent that from them so that they can put it on their books. Um, so it's best to get your own licensing, but if you don't have, you know, two, three years of experience or something, a lot of people will start out by just renting a license from someone that has it. Got it. Okay. So it sounds like the licenses, getting the licenses are a big, um, initial step to starting a pest control business. If I was 22 years old and 
maybe graduated college or chose not to go to college and was thinking about starting my own pest control business, what are the three to five key things that you need to get done in addition to getting your license to get that business off the ground? Yeah. Um, after licensing, if that's all squared away and you're straight on that, and then after that, it's pretty simple. There aren't really any other barriers to entry. You would need to set up your LLC, get some insurance, um, just like any other company, and then uh, buy your first round of products and materials. You're going to need a backpack, a B&G can for interior spraying, um, some initial chemicals, and, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. If you've got uh, a vehicle you can spray out of, uh, like a pickup or a van, then, then you're all good to go. Um, but yeah, pretty much if, if you have your business entity and you have your, your licenses and insurance, uh, you can, you can start right up. There's, there's nothing else really holding you back. Cool. Cool. So now zooming out a little bit, um, let's talk about the key services that King Pest offers. When I think of pest control, I think of a big truck with a lot of jugs of some type of unknown liquid in it and hoses that are used to spray. And I think of uh, you know, mouse traps and catching various vermin within a house. I used to live in New York City, so I've had a pest mm -hmm. control person come to catch a mouse in my apartment. Um, so pulling back a little bit, can you overview the key services that your company offers and really what a pest control business does? Yeah. Um, and so um, kind of backtracking a little. So those uh, those two licenses I talked about, there's a lower and the higher. And then within each of those, there's a bunch of different categories. Um, so you can have general pests, termites, um, public health, um, vertebrae, bunch of different things. And so what we currently have and what we focus on is just the general pest. And so that covers ants, spiders, cockroaches, all that stuff, and then bed bugs, fleas, and also mice and rats. Um, and so I've talked about it a bit on my Twitter um, that, that you can go and get all your licenses and do everything in-house. Um, but we felt like for us and our skill set, that would spread us a little bit thin. So what we do is just focus on just the general pest. If you have wasps, you know that we do that um, and, and those sorts of things. If you have a raccoon or a skunk, we don't take care of that. And we also refer termites out to another local guy. Um, and so we just focus on just the basic stuff. Most people, if they see some creepy crawlies in their house, uh, they look up pest control and we're going to pop up. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what we're focused on. Now, yeah, you can go all those different routes where you put a lot more chemicals on the truck. You're bringing out ladders. You um, have, have a bunch of different testing materials and, and big bait stations for termites and whatnot. Uh, but we just focus on just mice rats. We've got a few traps and bait stations for those. And then just a few jugs of products to, to take care of basic uh, tests. Got it. So yeah, focusing on um, your business specifically, what what are the big ticket items for you, whether by volume or by just gross revenue that are really driving the bulk of the sales and revenue for your business? Yeah, our uh, the bulk of our revenue is just our <clears throat> quarterly maintenance plan where we come out and service a customer's home once every three months. Uh, that's what, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but probably you know roughly 90% of our uh, services are. Um, just coming out once every three months, taking care of it. We spray the outside. If they need the interior sprayed, we can treat the inside, knock down cobwebs and wasp nests up to 30 feet high. And then we inspect the front and backyard and treat for any anthills, little things that, that might have popped up. Um, and that's the bulk of it. We do a little bit of commercial work that we're trying to get into more this year, uh, push more restaurants, small businesses, warehouses, that sort of stuff. Um, and then we always have the upsell with if they, if, if a quarterly, customer does get some mice or rats during the winter, then we upsell them there. Uh, but for the most part, it's just that general stuff. Um, as far as kind of ticket item, um, the highest ticket we have is bed bugs, because uh, we do have to come in, treat the entire house. Um, you, you don't want to cut any corners on those. So we treat the whole thing and it does take several visits. And on those ones, um, you know, it can run roughly a dollar a square foot per visitor. So, mm. so those will be um, pretty pricey. But uh, bed bugs, you know, they're that's just what we have to do. It's it's not like we're we're gouging people on those ones. Yeah, yeah. So for my 750 square foot one bedroom apartment, and I had bed bugs. Hopefully, I never do. Um, how much would that cost me to get that totally taken care of by King Pest? Uh, so for that one, we'd come out, and most likely, uh, so it'd be just 750 bucks, and that would cover two visits. Um, now, if you're not following our prep sheet, if you're not cleaning or, you know, 
taking care of things in between those visits like you're supposed to and they're they're sticking around and we have to do additional visits then we would have to charge more um but uh yeah a, a, a smaller spot like that would be just a dollar a square foot be about 750 bucks okay cool and and if you're willing to share what what's your personal margin on that as a business um so on bed bugs i don't know the exact how how, how those ones break down because we don't do a yeah. ton um okay. it's kind of you know it's specialty and so i i honestly i'm not sure um what we aim for typically is right around 40 percent across um all of our services so i do know that that's roughly where we were last year across everything um some of those smaller and specialty services I don't know the exact breakdown on yeah bed bugs, German roaches, mice, and stuff like that. Um, but we we do try to keep it kind of thirty to fifty percent, um, hopefully. Yeah. And so earlier you mentioned that typically someone will go and search for pest control in their area. My understanding is that is how a lot of people find home services businesses. That's how I do it as a consumer. I'm in Santa Monica. I Google service name plus Santa Monica. And look at the top rated folks on Google reviews. How are you getting your customers uh, top of funnel, attracting new ones, and then curious what you're doing to retain those over time for those ongoing services? Yeah, so um, we're we're kind of in the big three with uh, solar, pest, and security. Um, there's a lot of door to door in this space, and so that's how we've grown predominantly. My my cousin and I, the first couple of years, we're knocking doors. Now we have a team uh, that goes out and knocks doors. And we've got a vast majority of our customers come from that. Wow. Um, and obviously starting off, we didn't have a big Google presence and a, and a ton of word of mouth or anything. Now that it's been a couple of years, um, on Saturday, we just got our 400th Google review. And so we're definitely way out ahead of the rest of the competition. So now we do see quite a bit of organic growth coming in from, hey, I just saw your Google reviews and, and I want you guys out as soon as we can. Or word of mouth, referrals, a lot of that sort of stuff. So it's starting to grow in some other other avenues, but so far it's been mostly door to door, and then Google LSA has been really good to us as well. And what's Google LSA for people that don't know? Uh, so that's the local service ads. That's when uh, if you do search pest control near me, the first couple results that pop up, if any of them say Google guaranteed, um, that's that process that you have to go through to run that specific type of ad, and it's a it's a pay per lead rather than kind of a cost per click. Um, so it costs a bit more per lead, but but it's worked out real well for us. What are you paying per lead from Google LSA roughly? Um, we're uh, right in the in the 40s, depending on the month. During the more competitive months, it'll go up kind of high 40s, low 50s, and then during the winter time right now, there's less bidding, so we're kind of high 30s to low 40s. Okay, and if you get 10 of those LSA leads, how many of those become paying customers? We, we have a really high close rate because there isn't a ton of competition. And the other the only other person running LSA right now is Orkin. And a lot of people want to want to go with a smaller company. Uh, so we're seeing um, right around 60, 70 percent close rate on those. Um, so we've been we've been pretty happy with it. All right. So it sounds like your background as an entrepreneur and something that you've built the bulk of the customer acquisition for King Pest on originally is door to door sales, which is a channel I think that's very interesting, especially in today's world where with AI, you can spin up tons of cold emails and buy lists from data providers for very cheap and blast emails out and outsource cold calling. But it's really hard to automate and fake showing up at someone's door and asking them if they're interested in your services. So I'd really love to just dig into like the details there. And I guess starting off, tell me a little bit about how you got started doing door-to-door -door sales and kind of what your approach was in those early days. Yeah, so um, going door-to-door -door sales is, is, is a tough job. You're right, you can't automate it, you can't outsource, it's, it's just you against the world. Um, and so typically, yeah, we're just getting out there, hitting as many doors as we can. And uh, it's it's kind of a mix between, um, you know, what you think of the super pushy, scammy kind of sales. And uh, and then also, but we're not backing it clear off to where we're just saying, hey, are you interested? Um, it's a good mix where we're letting them know that, hey, our trucks are here in the neighborhood. Um, we're going to be doing some services for some neighbors. If we can add a few more folks in the area, we're doing our first service for half off. And that usually piques their interest enough to where they, they ask how much or what we're doing. Because uh, most consumers, you know, they do think, oh, if I call the exterminator, yeah, it's a big, huge truck that comes. They're going to fumigate my house, pump it full of harsh chemicals, 
and I, I and it's probably going to cost me two three grand. Um, and so, or you know, at least three four hundred bucks if if they know a little more. And so we just let them know, no, it's it's affordable. We're using stuff that's super safe. We're an eco friendly company. Uh, we explain our service and then we try to get them on because the the real margins come from us when we've got great route density. If we can send one truck into a neighborhood and do 10 or 20 services, we make way more than having 10 services throughout the day that are spread all across town. And so as you grow, the more density you have, the better your margins are, the less gas and wear and tear and everything you're using, you squeeze in a few more. Um, and so door to door, you, you can't replicate that kind of density through any type of ads either. When you talk to every single person in the neighborhood, uh, that's, that's where you're gonna get your best density for sure. Wow. Route density, that's a good insight. And so the idea there is that if you have to drive five miles to a neighborhood and service one house and then drive another five miles to another neighborhood to service one house, you're going to be uh, really driving your cog, your cost of goods sold up because you're going to be burning gas. That's time that you're paying the professional to be out there. Whereas if you can put three to five to 10 stops within the same neighborhood and you're driving less than a mile to get to all those houses, your margins are way higher. Is that is that a fair summary? Yeah, um, and not only it, does it cut down on your costs from gas and oil changes and tires and, and labor costs, but also if if they're all in the same neighborhood, you can probably do another two, three, four, five jobs in a day, which mm. means for the same amount of labor and even reduced other costs, you you're generating another four or five hundred dollars in revenue. So you're kind of you know you're maximizing revenue, minimizing costs. And that's where the real, real margin squeeze comes from. Um, now we do pay for that. If we're paying for a sales team, um, we can pay sales reps, um, rookies, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent. Uh, and then a vet who's been doing it for a lot of years. If I went and I sold for another company, I'd be expecting about 70 percent commission on the first year contract from every customer. Um, and so we do have to spend a lot more, probably lose in our cash flow negative on those accounts the first year. Um, but as long as those customers are sticking on and we can retain them, then then we, we make so much more rather than going with like a 35 percent customer acquisition cost through digital ads where, you know, years down the road, we're, we're not having as high margins. So it, it's kind of we take a hit up front, but down the road, it really pays off. OK, so when you have a veteran door to door salesperson out there selling closing deals, they're going to take a really big cut of that first year of service in which King Pest may actually lose money because you need to pay out the salesperson and then pay for all the overhead on that sale. However, in year two, three, four is when you would expect to start seeing profit from that customer. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So from a door to door sale, I've, I've been, I personally have a sales background, uh, mostly inside sales on, on Zoom and, and digital, uh, yeah, digital services, but if I was coming to King Pass and wanted to start doing door-to-door -door sales and you were hiring me, um, what are the one to three things you would tell me to make sure I'm successful on my first 100 to 500 knocks? Yeah, so when we're recruiting, when we're hiring, first off, we tell them, hey, this is not a cushy job. It's commission only. There's no base pay. And you're going to be outside working in the elements. If it's cold and rainy, then it's cold and rainy. If it's 110 degrees, you still have to get out there and knock doors. You know, carry a towel, wipe your wipe off your face. You're going to be sweaty. Um, and uh, you're going to have good days where you sell a ton and, you know, you're like, wow, I made more than a doctor today. And then you're going to have days where you sold zero and you're like, wow, I worked for 10 hours and made nothing. Um, so we try to set the expectations up front that this is not a cushy job. It's hard, um, but you do kind of have an unlimited income as you grow and you get better. You know, it, what you what you kill is what you eat. So you can make a ton. Um, it's really hard. And then uh, as far as making sure they're successful, we do just have a, a sales training program. We've got a manual that we have them read before they start up. And then we will do a sales training every single day throughout the whole summer with them. Um, so typically guys will meet up at the office at 9 a.m. We have about an hour long meeting where they can bring up any objections that they had the previous day, any struggles that they're kind of having, things that they're having a hard time getting through. And we'll go through those. And then we do a bunch of role plays, practice, critique, and uh, make sure that we're getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with each guy. Uh, then, then we send them back out there and, and let them go at it again. Great. What's the most money that a door-to-door -door salesperson has made for you uh, in their first six months? Uh, so for us personally, um, we have had some guys crack right around six figures, um, which is pretty good. Um, 
Now, some some other companies, I thought you were going to ask in the whole industry just because there's been some some crazy, crazy guys. And I don't know what their exact commission was, but uh, last year, the the guy that broke the pest control door-to-door industry record, he sold $1.5 million in revenue. Um, so I assume he got a pretty nice commission on that. He, he probably netted seven figures himself, and he worked about five months or so. So wow. that's that's the top dog. The average rookie for us usually makes about twenty to twenty five thousand. Um, so there's a pretty pretty big range, but that's the cool thing about sales. If you're if you're good at it, you can really up your income. I think I'm about to switch careers. That sounds like pretty lucrative, <laughs> lucrative right there. Um, what makes a good door to door salesperson? You've hired a lot of reps. It sounds like you've been a rep yourself. What are the couple attributes you see that like, wow, this person's going to crush it or this person's doing really well. And yeah, what's the composition of one of those people? Um, a, a couple of key characteristics you got to have are being level headed. I can't, can't pound your chest and think you're on top of the world after a good day, but you can't beat yourself up and get into a slump after a bad day. So the good reps are, are pretty even kill all summer long. Um, and then just really hard workers. It's, it's, it's a numbers game. It's not any type of magic. Um, sometimes the most smooth talking guys interview and we're like, oh yeah, you're going to be a killer, man. And, uh, but then they don't, they don't work hard. They don't get out there and it just doesn't connect. It's just putting in the reps, not, not giving up, believing in yourself. And then always just thinking that, that the next door is a sale. And I think that those two things are the most important, just hard work and then just kind of level, level headed emotions. Okay, so let's shift back into King's Pest, uh, King Pest as, as a business owner. You came up through door-to-door sales. You now have your own business that you're running, which it sounds like the bulk of the revenue is booked off of door-to-door sales. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So let's get into like the details of running the business, starting with the tools and technology. What, what are the main systems that you're using? Is it a pad and paper or using one of the CRMs like Book and Koala or Jobber? Talk to me about the key systems, uh, software systems you're using to manage your business? Yeah, we use a CRM called Pest Routes, or I guess they're Field Routes now. Um, we wanted to go with something that's industry specific rather than you know, Jobber, Booking Fall, that can do a lot. Uh, Pest Routes is great because it is industry specific. The, the call support, they know about pest control and bugs and they can really help. Um, there are a few other good ones like um, Pest Pack and uh, there, there's a few. Uh, but that's what we've gone with. Um, it does everything, scheduling, billing, keeping customers, um, info all in there. We can send out emails and texts and, and we can snail mail through there. So we use Pest Routes. It's got everything that, that we could need and we've been real happy with that. Um, the rest of our tech, we, we just use QuickBooks Online. Um, with my background in, in numbers, I just do all the accounting for us. Um, and uh, I think that that's that's pretty much. I mean, we don't use anything too special. It's pretty much those two are are, are our technology bills. Got it. Okay. Um, let's talk about challenges in the business. What are some of the biggest challenges that you faced running this business, and and how have you overcome them? Biggest challenges starting off day one. Nobody knows who yeah. you are. Right. Um, getting out there and getting your name in front of people. You have zero Google reviews. You have zero customers trying to go out there and, and getting that going. It was slower in the beginning than we had anticipated, um, just because selling for for other companies in the past already had a presence. Then when you go door to door, people recognize you. They know you. They trust you a little more. So starting off day one and door to door was uh, a bit more of a, a task than we had anticipated. And then other than that, um, hiring has been uh, pretty pretty big. We made a couple of mistakes early on. Our first two hires didn't work out, and one of them really, really kind of hurt the growth of the company quite a bit. And uh, we, we didn't know what we were doing. We kept working with her, trying to, to train her and hoping that she'd, she'd pick it up and get it figured out, but that wasn't the case. So since then, we've figured out some better hiring processes, and it's been a lot, a lot more smooth since then. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I want to dig into both of those, scaling and hiring. Let's start with hiring. I think hiring is a challenge across any business, no matter whether you're running Uber or a cleaning company or uh, hiring really any person, it can be challenging. I think for something like door-to-door sales, I would imagine it's even harder because that's a really hard job. I don't imagine there's um, a huge percentage of people that are coming and and ready to raise their hand to be a door-to-door salesperson. That just sounds grueling. I know you can be successful and make money, but People are afraid of rejection and the idea of going to random people's houses and being like, hey, do you want to, 
are you interested in this service? I can imagine it's, it's scary just thinking about it. Um, so how are you hiring these people? How do you even get your company out there? And then what's the process once someone says, hey, I'm interested in the interview process, talk me from, take me through from initially sourcing candidates through to hiring them and, and how you manage that at your business? Yeah, for hiring door-to-door -door reps, we just try to cast the net wide. So we run all the normal um, ads like Indeed and try try to drum up what we can there locally. And then really what we do is pretty much the, the same thing. We have to go out and find them. So we'll call up uh, local universities or we go to a bunch of different universities in different states as well. We'll ask them if we can set up a table with our tablecloth on it. We go in there and uh, they'll usually designate about an hour that we can have. And as kids come by, we just try to track them down and say, hey, we're, we're offering a job. Are you interested? Kind of pitch them on the, the, the benefits there. And that's where we, we get most of it. Most of our sales reps are college age kids between 20 and 30. And uh, they're the kids that are looking for just a summer job in between semesters. So it's not full time, long term. So it works out really well for us and for them. And that's that's the bulk of the hiring is done from from universities. And then um, hopefully getting them to recruit their friends, bring their friends in and hopefully build a, an internal funnel where as maybe kids are getting older, they've done three or four years, they don't want to do it anymore. Um, hopefully they've recruited a couple friends and they keep recruiting. And then uh, the big companies, they've just got a constant pipeline where they don't have to recruit quite as much. But uh, in the beginning, a lot of colleges talk to all of our friends and family, reach out over Instagram to anybody that we can, try to get sales reps from other companies that we know to come over to us. And then, uh, you know, hopefully maybe get lucky and grab one or two on Indeed or LinkedIn or something like that. Got it. Makes sense. Now let's talk about scaling. Let's go through a little bit of a speed round here. I want to ask you just some questions about uh, the business and how you've scaled it over time, um, just to give people a sense of going from zero to your first dollar to your first $10,000 um, and what that process looks like because the audience here is both current home service owners, but folks who may want to start a home service business. Um, so let's start with uh, a couple a couple key questions. Here. How long has King Pest been around for? Uh, we started in March 2022. So we're almost two years in. Or okay. two, and third. two years in. How long did it take you from saying, all right, we're starting this business to making your first dollar? Um, uh, first, first day, pretty much. I mean, we, we, you know, yeah, <laughs> right away. Okay. And what was that first sale? Do you remember what the product was or the service? Uh, uh, it was just a general quarterly maintenance program. Okay. And how'd you find that customer? Uh, door to door. Door to door. Okay. So you start the business. You're like, cool, we're doing this March, 2022. You have a background in door to door sales. So you walk up to someone's door, you knock on it and say, Hey, do you have a pest control problem? And yep. do you remember what they had that answer roaches or, uh, they had actually just moved from a bigger city. They came in, they felt like that was something that they needed anyway, and they hadn't found a company yet. And so they just wanted to sign up cause it was a new home and just do a preventative service. So, um, it was, it was easy. Easy. All right. Also, preventative service. That's good. Okay. So the first thing you sold wasn't, and so if someone's going to start a home service or a pest control business, it's like, hey, you don't have to hope that every door you knock on has an issue. It could be something preventative. And so that's, um, for people that aren't familiar, preventative service would be um, what exactly saying, hey, we're going to like, yeah, how, how, what is a preventative service? Yeah, we in come in and do the same service pretty much. We'll give an inspection, okay. make sure that there isn't any infestations. And then, uh, yeah, if we can lay down our barrier, nothing new should be come in so it's going to keep the house protected long term okay. and uh, we come quarterly for them the same and nothing nothing gets in okay cool so you go to door to door you knock boom get your first sale preventative service how long then did it take to go from that first sale to let's say ten thousand dollars in total revenue i think we did um we started mid-March that year, and I think we did about 7000 in revenue in the first couple weeks. And then for sure the second month, we had hit 10. And then uh, August was our biggest um, revenue month that year. We did about 26000 about six months after we started, five months. Love it. And at that point, so let's go to August. You're doing, you went from zero in March to 26 k in August. What's the team look like? Is it you and your partner, or have you hired folks at this point? We did hire one. It was a college friend and he worked the summer and sprayed all the jobs. And then in September, when he went back to school for the semester, uh, it was just me and my cousin that sprayed all the jobs the rest of the winter. And in terms of equipment at this point in August, is it it's you and your partner and you have your backpacks, you don't have any fancy trucks or equipment. Is that right? 
Uh, we did have one. We did ha have one uh, truck for that okay. tank that sprayed all summer. But just one. And that was a pickup, or was that a pest control specific vehicle? Uh, so it was just a van, a Nissan MV two hundred. I'm just kind okay. of the service vans you see for most yeah. open source. Okay, and the reason I'm asking is we want to break down these steps for folks that want to start a business, so they know you know you don't need a hundred thousand dollar investment to go start one of these businesses. You can start small and grow. Um, okay, so you're August twenty six k. You have your truck, you and your partner. You had one salesperson who went back to school. Um, talk to me about the business now. Here we are in January, February twenty twenty four. As much as you're willing to share around the size of the business, the employees, the revenue. Um, I think knowing that journey from zero just two years ago to where you are today would be really inspiring. So we'd love to hear just the current state of King Pest. Yeah, now we're about 24 months in. We have one office person and two technicians. Uh, we're hiring a third technician here in March. Um, last year we did right about 500,000 in revenue. Uh, we've got a sales team of, I believe about seven guys have committed for this year. We're hoping to get it up to about 10 and that should add um, we're, we're hoping for about another half million in, in revenue this year. So we're hoping to end the year right around a million with three technicians, one office person. And uh, I do a lot of my work remotely. I live out here in Salt Lake. Um, my business partner is there in town. So he kind of handles any type of overflow or putting out little fires. But for the most part, um, we're, we're, we're mostly absent at this point. Great. Well, congrats on, on the great growth in such a short period of time. That's awesome to hear. Um, Cool. I think last uh, last piece I wanted to hit on is you'd mentioned that you had, what, 400 Google reviews. Is that right? Yeah. Man, so the Google reviews are just everything in the game. From a consumer standpoint, it's the first thing I look at. Um, we actually have an interview with someone uh, named Clay who runs a company called Review Harvest, and they specialize in getting home services businesses more five-star reviews. But 400 is awesome. How'd you get so many great reviews? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I Nothing against some of those review harvester type companies. Um, so our CRM does help. After every service, we send the receipt with a picture of pictures of what we did, chemicals we used, that sort of stuff. And it also has a link to a Google review at the bottom. On top of that, we printed off business cards for all of our techs that have a QR code to our Google page. After every service, they go up to the door. They let the customer know that they're done. Let them kind of give a review of the service, see if there's anything new that they can do. And then they give them the card and they say, hey, if you leave me a Google review, five stars with my name, then my boss gives me a $10 tip and it doesn't cost you anything. And so every time that they get on and they say, hey, Jasper was awesome. He did so good. Or Adam did this and that. Then uh, I see that we, we give them a, a $10 tip for every one of those. So our, our techs are happy. They push for them hard. You know, they're getting another four or 500 bucks a month off of that. And uh, it helps us because we're, you know, a, a Google review is probably worth a lot more than 10 bucks to a company. So it's, it's a good mm. trade off. Love that. Love that. So the incentive there is obviously presenting the idea that you would love a Google review to the customer. And then there's an incentive that you can add on top of that, which is, hey, if you give a good Google review and you mention the technician who serviced you by name, that technician will earn a $10 tip. And so the person, the customer says, man, Jasper was great. No problem. Here's a five. Here's a, a five star review, and I know that I'm helping someone out as well. That that's the structure. Wow. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so uh, rounding out here, um, what are your plans for the future of King Pest and your business, and any other ventures that you may be running? Did I see that you're also buying companies or looking to buy companies? Is that right? Yeah. So okay. future, um, kind of the one year plan in Grand Junction. We've got a sales team. We're planning on running that up this year. We are currently negotiating to buy another small company in the state, and uh, we hope that that goes well. We should we should know here in the next couple of months if we're able to close or not. So we're looking to expand within the state. Um, on the three, five, and ten year plan, we plan on opening a new branch um, somewhere, hopefully expanding outside of Colorado soon. A one branch every other year, as long as we can afford the growth and keep going. And uh, hopefully we're working on a 10-year plan where we've got about five five to six branches at the end of 10 years. And then we'll reevaluate to see if it's something we want to do our whole life or kind of keep it where it's at or, you know, sell out and move on. But that's that's where we're at. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll talk again once you close on that company and we can talk a little bit about the build versus buy perspective on these SMBs because I know folks have different perspectives. And I think hearing firsthand 
um, from you how it's been building one from the ground up versus scaling one that you're buying will be super interesting. Um, and then, yeah, what advice would you have if someone said, man, I'm, I'm tired of my nine to five. I'm tired of working on someone else's business. I want to go start a pest control business. What's, what's something that you would tell them to get them started? A little bit of advice you might share. I would say go for it, whether it's pest control or something else, just get out there and maybe you realize that you don't like it. A lot of people get into it and they go, wow, my nine to five was cool. I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of this. I'm going back to that. That's the, <laughs> the that's health the insurance is great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but some people get into it and they go, oh, I could never go back to nine to five. And I think both, both paths are totally fine. You have to find what you like in life. And so I would say go for it, start something. Um, I would recommend starting rather than buying just because there's so much less risk. Don't, don't ruin your life on a big loan. You can't pay. But uh, yeah, I say go for it. If you need help, look, look on Twitter. There's tons of guys looking to help out, um, find a mentor and, and just, just get it done. Right. Awesome. Speaking of Twitter, where can folks listening and reading the workbench find you on Twitter, other social medias, websites, go ahead and share um, where you are on those platforms. Um, yeah, so I'm just a pest control guy. I'm pretty simple on Twitter or X or whatever we call it. Um, that's that's where you can find me. That's the best place. And then, uh, or you can always reach out. Our website is kingpestsplural.com. And uh, we'd always be happy to, to take care of you there. Cool. All right, Casey. Well, thank you for coming on and excited to stay in touch. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, man.